I think everything about this player's decision-making process has been about football. It will remain about football. And for that reason, we have a little thing around here called the sliding scale majiggy. Some folks have crystal balls. Some people have prediction alert machines. We got the sliding scale majiggy around here. What is that? It is a sliding scale majiggy type thing, all right, that predicts the amount of of confidence that I have that a player might be going to a particular school. 90% sliding scale majiggy, that boy a dog. How about that? I love how you said we have the sliding scale majiggy. What's that? It's a sliding scale majiggy. That Yeah. <laughs> it's a majiggy that slides up and down based off how confident I am. And right now that majiggy bought up to about 90% on, on Caleb Downs going to the University of Georgia. Jeff Rittenhouse seven four six four says, "Better shit can your majiggy, go Bucks." <laughs> Ouch! I think your scale is broken. Maybe you should pay a little more attention to teams outside of the SEC. Mm. Are you new at this? Very. That would explain a lot. Mm. The SEC already out here taking losses, and the season ain't even begun yet. Soft conference. Where are my dog fans at? LMAO. F that damn meter. That's all I got for it. That's all I could put on the air. Mm. They're gonna box their ass. <laughs> a couple bad weeks for Big Ten takes, huh? Yeah. God dang. Big Ten waxing my ass. Um, <laughs> out here, we call that around here being loud wrong. Um, I don't do anything but be loud. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, as y'all can tell, if I say it, I mean it. I'm not, I'm not faking it. I believe it in my heart of hearts. Um, I do not curtail takes. I do not make up takes. I do not fabricate them. So I feel like some people in this job just say stuff because they feel like it's going to get clicks. Emmanuel Acho, when I say shit, I mean it, and I say it like I mean it, and it's going to lead to me being loud wrong when I'm wrong. Um, and that is another case of being loud wrong. Now, let me, let me caveat all of this stuff, okay? Because A, the whole industry was wrong, and I'm going to explain how that happened. But B, I think I was the only one to wake up Friday morning and report to my audience and my, my subscribers, hey, ooh, something's up. Very, very fishy. It was 90% Thursday night. I woke up Friday morning and I bumped that down to 70%. But that, that's, not, that's, not the, that's not the reason we're here to talk to you about it tonight. Um, I'm not here to explain to you I was a little bit more right than everybody else while st still being wrong. I deserve all the criticism for being wrong. But I left that 10% on that video that y'all saw. And that's 48 seconds of a seven-minute clip that we talked about that topic. And most of that is me basically caveating everything I'm saying about him being a Georgia Bulldog with the idea that, hey, NIL and every man has his price could very much so still come into play here. So everybody's wondering, and particularly I saw a bunch of stuff on social media. This is why I don't pay for shit. This is why recruiting analysts are idiots. This is why inside information's all bullshit. All of them are wrong, yada, yada, yada. How could everybody be so wrong? Here's what I know. I know that sometime Wednesday, there was a phone call that, was that took place between Caleb Downs and Caleb Downs' people and Georgia and Georgia's people and Kirby Smart. That conversation led Georgia to believe that, hey, we just got to wait for this 48-hour time window to get up, and that dude's coming here. That dude's going to be a Georgia Bulldog, all right? And that's why you saw everybody in this space come out here going, hey, it's Georgia. Georgia's the team to beat. Georgia's the team to beat. Georgia's the team to beat. And then there's this 48-hour window where there's a lot of room for stuff to go down. And that's exactly what happened, um, in my opinion, right? There was, um, I do believe the reporting, and I will, I, I will stand on our reporting over at Patreon, that I do believe there was a, a, a million-dollar demand, right? A two-over-two two demand. And that wasn't the end of it. I don't want to go into full details. I, I have, to an extent, over on Patreon.com forward slash Brooks Austin. But I think there were, there were more demands on this, so much so that I've told the boys, and I'm going to tell you guys right here because this is the little, the little nugget for listening to this show. I would put a hefty penny on Caleb Downs to win the Heisman. At some point during his Ohio State career, I think it's going to happen. Um, and I probably just chucked your odds over there, and that's, that's my bad. But it, if you can find a bookie that will give you juice on that one, take it because I think they're going to do a lot of stuff with Caleb Downs up there at Ohio State, Ohio State. A lot of stuff that maybe Georgia wasn't willing to do, let alone do the payment stuff. George, Georgia's not out here paying a singular player a million dollars. I, I poo-pooed the, the articles and the, the reporting on the Carson Beck stuff. I thought that was hilarious. I thought it was even funnier for him to be asked about those reports with the people that reported them in front of them, only for him to laugh about said reports. But these reports, I believe, 
Okay, I do believe these were the demands made. And these were the demands met. So why, why even do the Georgia thing? Well, I think Georgia was an option at one point, particularly with the hiring of Travaris Robinson, right? I think Georgia had a lot of momentum in this recruitment. And then again, every man has his price, right? Every man has his, um, you know, final yes price and final yes checkpoint. And I think that was ultimately met, met. But I also think that there's no better leverage play in the world of transferring than saying that you might go to Georgia. You say you might go to Georgia and you scare other people shitless in these recruitments, right? I'm going to go to Georgia. Well, I know the only way for me to get that out of you going to Georgia is to outpay you because I can't out recruit you, right? There, there is no, I, we said this on Thursday, there was no better football match and football fit for him than to go to the University of Georgia and play in a very identical system with even better players around him or as similarly as great players around him as he was at Alabama. That from a football schematical standpoint, a football fit standpoint, it wasn't even close. It was whether or not Ohio State can get in with the NIL stuff, and that's exactly what they did. Yeah, and I think another part of it is that we're not, I don't know if how true this is, and it's just my speculation, but... Part of me thinks that the Downs camp still has some animosity towards the Georgia program and didn't necessarily 1,000% want to go there. So when whatever day it was comes around and Ohio State comes with this big offer and kind of gives you a way out to say, hey, we'll meet all your demands and, oh, by the way, you don't have to go to Georgia. I think that probably went a lot into the decision. I don't know, but I I, think that's probably – I don't mind reporting this and saying this on air right now, but I, I spoke to Gary Monday about this. I asked him straight up, what happened with Josh? And what, like, is, is it, is there any harbored feelings there? And when I spoke to Gary about it, it was very matter of fact, this is what happened. This is the way we went to go about it. We made the right decision. They probably missed. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was very matter of fact, because he's a football coach. He understands how these things work. He understood that this was a local in-state kid that they felt like they could come in late on and, and offer a scholarship and his eyes and heart would be exploding and he would commit on the spot. Well, that wasn't the case because they knew that this kid needed 90% of the the reps at a singular spot, and he was a dude. And that's exactly what he went on to be at North Carolina. So they were right. Georgia was wrong in that situation. Now, I don't know how mom feels. I have no idea how mom feels, but I know how dad feels. And dad was very matter of fact. It would, there was very little emotion in that discussion. It was very bing, bang, bong. This is how it went. We said no. We all parties moved on. We started over with Caleb. Is mm-hmm. kind of how it sounded. But again, I the that stuff, the they're still harboring bad feelings. That stuff, from my understanding, is is more of rumor and, and conjecture about how mom feels about the situation more so than the reality of the situation. Gotcha. To me, it just continues to show how crazy and how hard it is to track recruitment yeah. and all together now. I mean, think back to the Travis Hunter recruitment. That was bouncing all over the place down to the wire. And then, I mean, even the K.J. Bolden recruitment throughout the last year, it would seem like maybe Auburn was going to be the team to swoop in late. And then it was, oh, FSU is going to lock him down. He's still going to go to be a Seminole. And then it was Georgia that seemed like at the last minute came in and got him. And you, you, there's several more examples. There's tons of examples of that stuff happening. And this is just another example of it. Like, you can never feel so sure in recruitment anymore because things can change so quickly to the point where it's like, well, he's a, he's a dog, and then it's like 10 minutes later, like, what the heck just happened? Like, how did this end up? You know, I, I was told most other forums and most other places in this beat kind of burned down on Friday afternoon. And I felt like our Discord was relatively mellow um, to mm-hmm. an extent. I mean, we set a new record for the month for messages sent. But nonetheless, it was a relatively calm day in the aftermath because – I think because of the way that we reported it, which was, the I, I think, the most accurate, which was it was Georgia, but, hey, there's always caveats. And that's what I, it was in the last note, right? The last Patreon post I posted was, hey, I'm bumping it down from 90% to 70% on the Majiggy because something's fishy. Mm-hmm. Something's very fishy, and I think money's now becoming a major factor in this recruitment. And then by the end of the day, Ohio State, and then we find out, ooh, maybe a Maybach. Ooh, I've heard it as high as 1.7%. People in the chat tonight saying 1.3. I was told two over two, which is a million a year, which is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. But I would also say if there's ever a position player in college football to give it to, it's him. Yeah. Yeah. It's a I really good investment. I think, yeah, I think he's worth every dollar. Very um, good investment. Unless it costs you two more players because they want pay raises. It's the cheapest anybody's ever going to get, Caleb Downs. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. So really, you could I mean, say they're, they're getting a steal on Caleb yeah. Downs right yeah, and now. I mean, the other argument for this was that, you know, basically 
he needs to go to Georgia because if he doesn't go there, it's going to affect his draft stock. Let's be honest. The kid's a top 30 pick wherever he plays. I joked with an NFL scout and said he could play his next two years at Bishop Sycamore and y'all draft him in the first round. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. He's, he said, that, yeah. he's that prospect. He's yeah. that talented. It's yeah, the same is. reason why Travis Hunter can go play for Colorado, win four games, two seasons back-to-back, and still be a first-round draft pick. Yeah. Mm-hmm.